Hello everyone, welcome back to Study Mation's Computer Science Series, and today we're going to talk about types and methods of data transmission. Data sent over long distances is usually broken up into data packets. These are also sometimes called as datagrams. Or we can simply call them as packets. The packets of data are usually quite small, typically 64 kilobytes, which are much easier to control than a long continuous stream of data. The idea of splitting up data in this way means each packet can be sent along a different route to its destination. This would clearly be of great benefit if a particular transmission route was out of action or very busy. So, for example, if this route is very busy, has a lot of traffic, then the data can be sent with the alternate route, like this route or this route. The only obvious drawback of splitting data into packets is the need to reassemble the data when it reaches its destination. So, for example, these th this one data is split into three data packets, and at the end, on the receiving end, this has to be reassembled into one data. And that's where the problem occurs. A typical packet is split up into a packet header, a packet payload, and a packet trailer. For each packet, the packet header consists of an IP address of the sending device, the IP address of the receiving device, the sequence number of the packet. This is to ensure that all the packets can be reassembled into the correct order once they reach the destination. And the packet size. This is to ensure that the receiving station can check if all the packets have arrived intact. For each packet, the payload consists of the actual data being sent in the packet. This is usually about 64 kilobytes. For each packet, the packet trailer consists of some of the way of identifying the end of the packet. This is essential to allow each packet to be separated from each other as it travels from sending to receiving station. An error checking method, cyclic redundancy checks, are used to check data packets. This involves the sending computer adding up all the one bits in the payload and storing this as a hex value in the trailer before it is sent. Once the packet arrives, the receiving computer recalculates the number of one bits in the payload. The computer then checks this value against the one sent in the trailer. If the two values match, then no transmission errors have occurred. Otherwise, the packet needs to be reset. Now, let's talk about packet switching. Let us now consider what happens when a photograph, for example, is sent from computer A to computer B. The photograph will be split up into a number of packets before it is sent. There will be several possible routes for the packets between computer A, sender, and computer B, receiver. Each stage in the route contains a router. A router receives a data packet and based on the information in the header, decides where to send it next. For example, this diagram. It is a typical network showing possible routes between A and B. Packet switching is a method of data transmission in which a message is broken up into a number of packets. Each packet can then be sent independently from start to point. At the destination, the packets will need to be reassembled into their correct order using the information sent in the header. At each stage in the transmission, there are nodes that contain a router. Each router will determine which route the packet needs to take in order to reach its destination. 
the destination IP address is used in this part of the process. Suppose a photograph has been split up into five packets that have been sent in the following order. Each packet will follow its own path, route. Routers will determine the route of each packet. Routing selection depends on the number of packets waiting to be processed at each node. The shortest possible path available is always selected. This may not always be the shortest path that could be taken, since certain parts of the route may be too busy or not suitable. Unfortunately, packets can reach the destination in a different order to so that in which they were sent. This figure shows one possible scenario. Notice the different paths taken by each packet from computer A to computer B. Also notice that the packets have arrived in a different order compared to the way they were sent. This figure shows one possible scenario. Computer B will now have to reassemble the packets into original sequence. The benefits of packet switching are, there is no need to tie up a single communication line. It is possible to overcome failed, busy, or faulty lines by simply rerouting packets. It is relatively easy to expand package usage. A high data transmission rate is possible. The drawbacks of packet switching include packets can be lost and need to be resent. This method is more prone to errors with real-time streaming, for example, a live sporting event being transmitted over the internet. There is a delay at the destination whilst the packets are being reordered. Sometimes it is possible for packets to get lost because they keep bouncing around from router to router and never actually reach the destination. Eventually, the network would just grind to a halt as the number of lost packets mount up, clogging up the system. To overcome this, a method called hopping is used. A hop number is added to the header of each packet, and this number is reduced by one every time it leaves a router. This figure shows the hop numbers between routers. Each packet has a maximum hop number to start with. Once a hop number reaches zero and the packet hasn't reached its destination, then the packet is deleted when it reaches the next router. The missing packets will then be flagged by the receiver and a request to resend these packets will be made. Let's talk about data transmission. Data transmission can be either over a short distance, for example, computer to printer, or over longer distances, for example, from one computer to another in a global network. Essentially, three factors need to be considered when transmitting data. The direction of data transmission, for example, can data transmit in one direction only or in both directions. The method of transmission, for example, how many bits can be sent at the same time. How will data be synchronized? Th that is, how to make sure the received data is in the correct order. These factors are usually considered by a communication protocol. Let's talk about different types of transmission mode. We have simplex, half duplex, and a full duplex. First, let's talk about simplex data transmission. Simplex mode occurs when data can be sent in one direction only. For example, from sender to receiver. An example of this would be sending data from a computer to a printer. Half duplex mode occurs when data is sent in both directions, but not at the same time. For example, data can be sent from A to B and from B to A along the same transmission line, but they can't both be done at the same time. An example of this would be a walkie-talkie, where a message can be sent in one direction only at a time, but messages can be both received and sent. Let's talk about full duplex data transmission. Full duplex mode occurs when data can be sent in both directions at the same time. For example, data can be sent from A to B and from B to A along the same transmission line simultaneously. An example of this would be broadband internet connection. Now let's talk about types of data transmission. We have serial data transmission and parallel data transmission. First, let's talk about serial data transmission. It occurs when data is sent one bit at a time over a single wire. Bits are sent one after the other as a single stream. Serial data transmission works well over long distances. However, the data is transmitted at a slower rate than parallel data transmission because only one channel wire is used. Data will arrive at its destination fully synchronized, that is, in the correct order. An example of its use is when connecting a computer to a printer via a USB connection. Let's talk about parallel data transmission. It occurs when several bits of data 
usually one byte, are sent down several channels or wire, all at the same time. Each channel wire transmits one bit. Parallel data transmission works well over short distances. Over longer distances, for example over 20 meters, data can become skewed, that is, the data can arrive unsynchronized, and bits can arrive out of order. The longer the wire, the worse this can become. It is, however, a faster method of data transmission than serial. The internal circuits in a computer use parallel data transmission since the distance traveled between components is very short and high-speed transmission is essential. Note that both serial data transmission and parallel data transmission can be simplex, half-duplex, or full-duplex. Here's an activity to solve. Explain what is meant by serial half-duplex data transmission. Pause and resume when you're ready with the answer. The correct answer is, data is sent one bit at a time over a single wire in both directions, but not at the same time. Explain what is meant by parallel full duplex data transmission. Pause and resume when you're ready. The correct answer is, Data is sent down several wires, usually one byte in both directions at the same time. Explain what is meant by serial simplex data transmission. Pause and resume when you're ready. The correct answer is, data is sent one bit at a time or single wire in one direction only from sender to receiver and vice versa. Next question is, which types of data transmission are being described? Data is sent one bit at a time in one direction only. Pause and resume when you're ready. The correct answer is serial simplex data transmission. Data is being sent 8 bits at a time in one direction only. Pause and resume when you're ready. The correct answer is parallel simplex data transmission. Data is being sent 16 bits at a time in both directions simultaneously. Pause and resume when you're ready. The correct answer is Parallel full duplex data transmission. Data is sent one bit at a time in both directions simultaneously. Pause and resume when you're ready. The correct answer is serial full duplex data transmission. Data is sent 16 bits at a time in one direction only. Pause and resume when you're ready. The correct answer is parallel simplex data transmission. Now let's talk about Universal Serial Bus or USB. As the name suggests, the Universal Serial Bus or USB is a form of serial data transmission. USB is now the most common type of input-output port found on computers and has led to a standardization method for the transfer of data between devices and a computer. It is important to note that USB allows both half-duplex and full-duplex data transmission. As this figure shows, the USB cable consists of a four-wire shielded cable with two wires for power, red and black. The other two wires, white and green, are for data transmission. When a device is plugged into a computer using one of the USB ports, the computer automatically detects that a device is present. This is due to a small change in the voltage on the data signal wires in the USB cable. The device is automatically recognized and the appropriate device driver software is loaded up so that the computer and device can communicate effectively. If a new device is detected, the computer would look for the device driver that matches the device. If this is not available, the user is prompted to download the appropriate driver of software. Some systems do this automatically and the user will see a notice asking for permission to connect to the device website. We will now consider the benefits and drawbacks of using the USB system. It can be seen in this table. A new type of USB connector, referred to as USB-C, is now becoming more common in laptops and tablets phones. This is a 24-pin symmetrical connector, which means it will fit into a USB-C port either way around. It is much smaller and thinner than older USB connectors, offers 100 watt or 20 volt power connectivity, which means full-size devices can now be charged and it can carry data at 10 gigabytes per second. This means it can now support 4K video delivery. USB-C is backward compatible to USB 2.0 and 3.0, provided a suitable adapter is used and is expected to become the new industry standard universal format. 
Thank you for watching Study Mission Any Minute Educational Videos.